when we talk about minorities, we're here to close the racial and the gender wealth gap. So women, this is for you. Black people, this is for you. Brown people, this is for you. Um, minorities by social economic status, people that came from poverty. Take control of your career and compensation right now. It's your five minute career cat. Welcome back to another opportunity to expand with our new interview series featuring some of the absolute pioneers in pivoting. Whether that is in their career, within their company, or pivot in their confidence, like our guest today, who is doing what I like to call revolutionary work in the investing space. So if you haven't already, hit that follow or subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you do not miss any of these amazing guests we have planned for you. Also, comment if there's someone you want to hear from or an industry-specific guest you'd like to see on the podcast. This is a Forbes Black collaboration. So let's get into the interview, one that I've been looking forward to for a long time. I am so passionate about this topic, and Raquel Wilson is an award-winning educator, published author, international speaker. Her workbook series, Black Wealth Freedom, has impacted leaders internationally. Formerly a teacher during the pandemic, Raquel now serves as the CEO of Four Our Last Names finding investing for first-generation wealth builders, serving both individuals and financial institutions for our last names is an app that bridges the educational gap for first-generation investors who experience problems with being financially illiterate or underbanked. I know the audience cannot wait, is as intrigued as I am to learn more about Raquel and her journey and this revolutionary app and how she got to this very point in her journey. So welcome to the podcast, Raquel Wilson. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me, Jamila. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for coming on. I want to jump right into it. Tell us how you got here. You're building an investing app specifically for the youth. I know it's more, it'll be more than that, but tell us how you got to this point. Well, um, it's beautiful to just see the thread that God is placing through my life throughout all of the experiences. Um, as mentioned, my name is Raquel Wilson, and now in this space in my life, I teach people how to build wealth through upskilling, investing, and stewardship. So when it comes down to my career journey and how I got to where I am, it all starts with why. Um, even during my time in college, I went to The Ohio State University for undergrad, and I was just like any other college student who didn't really know what they wanted to do, but I knew that my why was helping others and I wanted to help others through forward thinking and being proactive. So I studied public health and after graduation, my why evolved um, and that evolved into wanting to empower the next generation through education. So I became something that I never thought I would be something that when I was in kindergarten, I said, I don't want to do this because they don't make enough money. I became a teacher. Um, and during that time as a teacher in Oklahoma, one of the lowest paid states for teachers, my why continued to evolve, kind of a sub why of now needing to figure out, even though I have a job with benefits that my parents always told me, you know, that's the American dream, I still was living paycheck to paycheck. So my why became having to find out how to make a livable wage. So that evolved me into becoming a day trader. Um, but, you know, I was still a teacher and my why continued to evolve. And then it started to focus a lot on sustainability and stewardship. So I evolved from being a day trader to an investor. And now in this day and age in my life, my why is really collective legacy and collective mm. liberation over just freedom, which can be so individualistic. So I'm very grateful to be a serial entrepreneur now and focus on creating businesses that create impact and income. Oh, that's incredible. And I have a million questions. As I always tell my <laughs> audience when they're tapped into the podcast, I'm going to be selfish. <laughs> I'm going to ask questions that I want to know about. And something you said that really intrigued me, you kind of jumped from day trader to investor. So let me ask you, what were you day trading? Yes, I was day trading on the foreign exchange market. So uh, I used to actually be called the peso princess because I was very profitable on trading the US dollar against the Mexican peso. Um, and for those who aren't aware of what the foreign exchange market, it's in short being able to buy and sell different currencies, whether it's the US dollar or the great British pound. Um, but being a day trader usually is more of a short term time frame. And I remember waking up at like 3 a.m. to trade on the London market right. and it just wasn't so sustainable for me. So I still love day trading. It's best when you have more time freedom, but it definitely got me introduced into the world of making your money grow for you. 
which is incredible. That's where I got my start as well. So we have similar backgrounds and it is such an incredible market and there's so much to learn, so much that you end up learning and it does open the doors for other opportunities. And you mentioned transitioning to being an investor. So tell us a little bit about that part of your journey. Yes. So I am a long-term investor. What that means, at least according to tax season or Uncle Sam, is that you're investing and you're holding your assets for over a year. Um, So for example, I paid off my undergraduate student loans for my investing profits in cryptocurrency. um, And a lot of people get burned, unfortunately, when it comes to cryptocurrency. And that's why it's so important not only to have education, which is what I'm really excited to gamify and bring my app to um, to the market to really help people in their investment education, but also you have to understand how the market works and have some long suffering and be patient. So I was able to hold my assets um, for, I want to say about a year and a half, reach my goal. I wasn't greedy. Once it reached Mm -hmm. that goal, you know, I withdrew and I paid off my student loans. Um, So now I invest not only in the stock market, I invest in real estate um, through real estate investment trusts, as well as physical properties. Um, And investing has really just been a door to open the pathways for financial freedom, financial liberation, um, not just for me, but also my community and those connected to me. Which is incredible. So congratulations. I do a little bit of both as well. And you mentioned real estate. So what parts of real estate interest you most and you want to share with the audience that you're getting into, have been into, as well as how you want to encourage others to look at and look at it from a different lens. I think real estate, just like the stock market and the financial markets as a whole, there's so many mm-hmm. different ways to play. And I'd love for you to share the ways that you're playing right now in real estate. Share share with the audience. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I'll say with any type of investing, it's so important to know your personal style, right? Personal finance is personal and investing is also personal. Um, So you first have to understand, how do I feel about risk? For example, my first home, which I bought when I was turning 24 or 25 years old, I knew that it was a property that I wanted to live in, um, but I also wanted this property to be something that I passed down to future generations. Um, So I personally like to invest long term. I actually just embarked on a new property, which is going to be my first property as a real estate investor that I'm not personally living in. Um, But there's a unique strategy that I'm applying with this. Um, As we talked about, and as viewers may now newly uh, learn, I am a new graduate student at Duke University out in North Carolina. And I figured, you know, when it comes to engaging in something new, especially education, you have to sometimes get loans. And I had a decision to make. I could either take a traditional student loan to pay for my tuition, or I could actually take a loan in something that's going to grow in value, aka grow in equity, um, and also get me cash flow. So um, this new property that I'm investing in will not only bring me some cash flow, aka more money in my pockets or more money for tuition in this case, but also it's something that will grow over time um, and grow in value, which will allow me to then invest in more properties. Um, So when it comes to investing, I always say it's not necessarily bad to take out a loan. It's not necessarily bad to invest in the market, but you always have to have a plan. And for me and my risk style, I like long-term investing and I like cash flow. So that's how it works for me. Which are two great things to like audience. If you're listening, you, you can have it both ways. You like, you can like cash flow. That's going to bring you returns today however that mm-hmm. might be, as well as be planning for the future and building generational wealth at the same time, which yeah. it has this incredible element of compounding um, that most yeah. of us haven't experienced, especially in the Black community. And I know that's part of your target. So share with us a little bit about For Our Last Names and why you started this journey? Well, my introduction to both education and education technology started as being a teacher. I taught biology at a founding high school where we only had a ninth and a 10th grade. I always say the best businesses solve real world problems. And as we were growing as a high school, we were getting ready to graduate our first group of seniors. And I wanted to solve the problem of students graduating without personal finance education. Uh, So I got certified in personal finance. Um, Of course, I paid off my student loans at that same time. And I realized that even though the curriculum that I created was great, even though my students loved it, even though that curriculum turned into the internationally selling Black Wealth Freedom Series, that sometimes the best things are hidden in books 
or in curriculum. Mm. So I wanted to bring technology to it. So that's what brings us for our last names. And for our last names is an upcoming app launching in February, Black History Month of 2024. Um, and with the For Our Last Names app, it bridges the gap between investing and education for first generation wealth builders like myself, people that didn't have those dinnertime conversations about personal finance or investing. Um, so on the For Our Last Names app, users will be able to learn how to invest, connect with their community, again, flashback to that community liberation, um, and protect their assets all in one place. Um, our users on our wait list are very excited about our feature called the Wealth Vault, which is where individuals will be able to store their education notes, be able to store their wealth milestones while they're paying off their loans or engaging in other wealth building practices. Um, and what we're most excited about is that users will actually be able to um, build estate planning within the app. We know so many people that have, you know, gone through GoFundMe funerals, for example, or had to recreate the wheel when it comes to wealth in the next generation. So the For Our Last Names app is focused on helping you educate yourself, help you actually build wealth through investing, and help you actually retain that wealth and build generational wealth for your last name. Which is incredible. You just added a layer on top of a layer when you talked about estate planning. It's not something yeah. that we traditionally think about in our community, specifically the black community. It is yeah. pretty much we get we get here. We're going to arrive at birth and we go through life. We, we attempt to do everything we want to do in life, but we really don't plan. We don't think about. And it's really oftentimes it feels taboo to even discuss, OK, when you die, mm -hmm. this is what our plans are going to be. It feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're being morbid or whatever you want to call it. There's reasons why. And if you all in the audience listening today, watching today on YouTube, you have any thoughts on why we're like this? I'm sure there have been studies done, but we refuse and oftentimes get hostile when someone says, let's talk about what happens after you die. And mm -hmm. incorporating this as a part of that wealth generation while you're living and, and ultimately being able to pass that on and leaving a legacy is really what we're talking about. Not a burden, exactly. but a legacy. So I applaud you for including that piece, which is huge, huge part of it. Thank you. Huge part Thank of you. It. So many people that I've consulted with and uh, shared wisdom that I've learned over the years. It, sometimes it's as simple as making sure you add beneficiaries to your retirement accounts that most people do not do. And then that money yeah. is left to probate and different things that you have to go through to get access to it. That's just costly for no reason. So I love that you're doing that. I can't wait to get a sneak peek. I hope as, as an, a guest on our podcast, we can actually get a sneak peek and, and test drive the app and hopefully be a yeah. part of that feedback on the front side for you. Uh, we loved that opportunity to do that and also have you Thank back you. when you launch the podcast so that you can share some of those early wins and the things that are happening and for our last name. So that's incredible. That's incredible. So as we start to wrap up, which this will be a long wrap up for the audience, I want you to give, I want you to give your top three things you would advise someone to do specifically parents that are probably listening. That's about what our audience is in that parental age between their 25 to 40 range is our audience. Mm -hmm. Most of them have children. What would be some of the advice you'd give those parents to help their children on this journey so they can educate themselves as well as their kids at the same time around building this financial literacy, this library, their own mental library around financial literacy? What would you tell them? Absolutely. I love this question because children are the future. And I don't say that just because I'm a former teacher, but quite literally, we can see that they have the most time available and time is of the essence when it comes to investing. So I would say start investing on behalf of your child or on behalf of your niece or nephew. Um, there are various accounts that you can invest in um, to actually start that journey for them. I definitely recommend that at least until our app comes out, that you sit down with a financial professional and see what's best for your family because personally, finance is so personal. Um, but of course, getting started with the basics, of course, you want to make sure that you have a high yield savings account because that's going to at least uh, 
give you some more interest, uh, more compound interest than a traditional savings account. Then you can move into low risk assets. You can buy, you know, some bonds for your child or there are different tax deferred accounts as well that can help with schooling, for example. You just want to make sure that they have that best foot forward. So my first piece of advice would be that time is of the essence. Get investing now. Have your emergency savings in a high yield savings account and start to invest in some low risk assets. Number two, I would say Make sure that you as a parent, as a caregiver are protected as well. Make sure that um, beyond just the conversations that you're having about what you want to do when you pass, um, make sure that you get it in writing, get with a lawyer, get with an estate planning attorney to actually get that in your will or get that in your trust, depending on your assets. Um, and then number three, I would say that it's important to keep in mind that um, although you're setting the vision up front, you want to make sure that you're revisiting that and making sure that it's actually fitting with how life is changing, how life is is growing. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just write your wealth plan and just throw it to the side. Um, make sure that you're continuously revisiting it, which is why it's so important to not only have technology like the upcoming For Our Last Names app, but also engaging materials like the Black Wealth Freedom series that you can continuously rethink how you're approaching things and think about what have I learned newly in this past, say, six months that I can now add to my wealth plan. So those will be my top three. Those are your top three, which are incredible top three. So it's a, it, it is a tiptoe strategy because investing, right, can be a little daunting. It's a lot of information. It's a lot going on. Yeah. It seems like a foreign language to so many people. But as Ra Raquel mentioned, you can actually, you know, start by making sure the money that you have sitting in your checking account, savings account, whatever that might be, sitting in a high yield savings account, right? Where at this point, I know some places where you can get three to 5%, which is better than no percent. Right. Better than no yes. percent. So tiptoe into this. If you're a little nervous, if you're a little scared, which most people are, you're not alone. I was to day one, but I had early exposure like Raquel is talking about based upon, you know, my high school basketball coach exposing me to investing and telling me about a Roth IRA at 14, 15 years old. So it was a little less daunting when I was in my early 20s and it was I was going to start these accounts because I had that early exposure. So let this be, if this is your first piece of exposure, if it's your second or third, let that be confirmation that you can tiptoe into it and graduate yeah. yourself. But don't stay. Don't stay just investing in a high yield savings account. That won't be enough to keep up with inflation. Keep Absolutely. taking those steps forward. Keep taking those steps forward. So Raquel, the app is coming out in February for Black History Month. Who's the yeah. true target audience? Like, cause I know there's a, it feels like there's a component for individuals and businesses as well as adults, but like who, who's the true target audience? Yes. Well, although this is a solution that can reach so many different people, we're focused on those that identify as first generation, whether you're a first generation college graduate or the first generation in your family to invest or a first generation in American. You came to America and you have a vision to create something for your family for your last name, but you don't necessarily know how we are here for you. Um, when we talk about minorities, we're here to close the racial and the gender wealth gap. So women, this is for you. Black people, this is for you. Brown people, this is for you. Um, minorities by social economic status, people that came from poverty. I'm raising my hand. If you're if you're watching the video, you see it. But if you're on audio, I'm raising my hand because that's me. Um, they say, you know, be the person that you needed when you were growing up. And that's mm. actually what we're doing with this app, supporting people who are minorities, come from first generation backgrounds and want to build something for their last name. Which is incredible. So you mentioned a few groups. Uh, one, that at the five minute correct, we're very passionate about, which is black women, because all three of us are black, strong queens in this community. And we're trying to get information like this to everyone in nice bite sized chunks. So you're getting great information that you can take action on from Raquel right now before the app even comes out. So you're even better prepared by the time February gets here, if you can do something with this next five months or so time is of the essence. I believe that's exactly what you yeah. said earlier. It is the most valuable asset, in my opinion, on earth. It's the only thing you can, you can't get back. You can't change. It's go Once it's gone, it's gone. This time we spent with you was worth it. This time Thank we you. spent with you was worth it. And I'm so excited about what you're doing in this space. I believe it is the key to unlocking our culture in this United States of America, this part ownership, legacy, mm -hmm. wealth generation, 
that's how you get a seat at the table, in my opinion, individually and for your family and your community. But you also, by doing it, you're teaching who's right around you. We do what we see. I always share the the story about my father not wanting me to major in art because he was an artist and he wanted mm-hmm. me to go be a doctor or a lawyer, like, you know, the Cosby show in different world, right? That's what most of the baby boomer parents wanted for their children. But all I saw was him being an artist, him working on graphics, him studying light and photography. And so mm-hmm. naturally that's what I wanted to do. So if we do what we see, If you're doing something between now and the time for our last name launches, you're doing something that they're going to be able to see and it's going to impact them for the rest of their lives. By listening to this episode with Raquel today, you got some information. It hopefully was confirmation for you, but if it's just the start for you, it's going to be a great start for you. And I wish you well in that endeavor. And we're going to bring Raquel back when she launches so that she can share some more. And hopefully you will all be able to update in the comments, have questions for and share all that you've done just from hearing this information. So I like to end the podcast by asking all of our guests, what five words, it could be a phrase, it could be a mantra, your final five words that you would like to leave with the audience It could be an affirmation, it could be a statement, a quote, whatever you want it to be, but what would be your final five words that you'd leave with the audience that you'd want to stick with them? Well, it all starts with the mindset. So my five words are based on my first book, Holistic Money Mindset, Mental Preparation for Abundance. And it is holistic money mindset unlocks abundance. Oh, wow. Say it one more time for the audience in case they're taking notes. Say it one more time for them. Yes. Note takers are money makers. So I hope y'all have been taking notes. If not, go ahead and rewind and listen one more time. But (laughs) the five (laughs) words are holistic money mindset unlocks abundance. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your wealth of wisdom through your journey. It has been an absolute pleasure. As I said, this is an episode I've been waiting to record for a while and share with our audience. They hear it from me, but hearing it from someone outside of our immediate co-host is always a blessing for abundance, right? So you're sowing a seed into what I would consider to be millions worldwide. And Mm -hmm. I think it'll live here and continue to impact people and it will be a part of your legacy. So I appreciate you coming on. I wish you all the best in this endeavor. We're going to be tracking. We're going to be watching. We're going to be cheering you on from the South, just below you, as you (laughs) embark on this incredible technology, financial literacy endeavor. So congratulations, all the best, as well as in your graduate studies. And we can't wait to keep up with you over the future. Thanks for being on today. Thanks for having me, Jamila. I look forward to next time already. Excellent. Excellent. And as I always say, I hope you enjoy. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment for Raquel. Wish her some luck. Wish her some abundance in her future endeavor. Spread the love. That's how you get it back. You reap what you sow. And with that being said, I love you. Have an amazing day. Now, the five minute career hack, we call this hacking. Look at you. You just did it. And you don't have to stop here. Take one step every week and ensure that you are pouring into you and getting closer to your career goals. Yep, see that button down there? Hit subscribe, but don't stop there because you know what they say, sharing is caring. So take five and we'll see you next week.